Check one, two. Check. Check one.
we sing together. Kubunja wasn't drinking like Alfred, but God know best. The same cancer killed my father, the same cancer killed my uncle. And today we are celebrating the life beyond our uncle. May his soul rest in peace. And I just want to say a few words in this song here, especially the chorus. Give a little more than you can And if you try to fix more than you bring Shine a little love, give a sight to the ones who lost you. Is a place for people like you. Oh, the 
Good morning to everyone. It's good to have every one of you today. And we'd like you to adhere to the Ministry of Health protocol. Make sure you sanitize and social distancing. If you belong to the same household, you can sit together. If not, will you accommodate three persons in a row? Three persons who, if they don't belong to the same household, their room is upstairs. So we'd like you to just adhere to the distancing. Okay, I repeat myself. If you belong to the same household, you can sit together. We only accommodate three persons. And row, the row, each row of the chairs. Okay, so we'll actually skip three chair, chairs. First one, three. So we have three in the row. Okay, we appreciate you cooperating with us.
I need you to lift your hands heavenward one more time. Well, Lord, this is that ocean. This is that place, Father, where you lead us. Faith without borders. Lord, I pray tonight in Jesus' name that as we step out and into all that you have for us, as we have the courage sometimes to step into the great unknown, that there we meet Jesus and we meet the will of God and we meet the purpose of God and we meet the promise of God and we meet the goodness of God. Lord, give us that courage. Give us that Holy Spirit boldness to keep on trusting you to walk on those waters. Lord, to go into that great unknown at times, but knowing that the God of all knowledge, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent God that you lead us and take us Father we thank you for what you've accomplished here tonight Lord it's only the start we're excited about Jerusalem the temple just a couple of days time Father we thank you in Jesus name Amen Amen Open tributes Good morning, everyone. I'm about to read this tribute from the special friend of Leonard Leighton Boyno. Leonard Leighton was a family man, worked very hard. He owned much land. He loved his family very much. No matter where they were, he kept in touch. He came to New York to stay while being with family made him smile. He was funny, smart, and like to share, full of life and energy to stay. He liked to help, yes indeed. For me, he really fulfilled a need with a careful eye as he babysat. Yes, he was a protector as a matter of fact. We talk much about many things, the fond memories those thought brings, like how to help my daughter and my son, his words and guidance help a ton. He will be missed, I know it's true. To the family, we are praying for you. May God comfort you and your sorrow and give you strength as you face tomorrow. May he rest in peace. Good morning. I am Granville Gurley from Beckway. Mr. Bino and myself have become very close. I don't know how, I don't know when. But we all are marinas together. Mr. Bino was at sea in many ships. Mr. Bino was a very brave man. Mr. Bain is a man who fails no one. Depend, doesn't matter your color, doesn't matter your position. Whatever you have to tell you, he will tell you. It's up to you if you want to get angry with him. I get more closer to Mr. Bainham. When he was sailing with the, um, the Geese Company, he had a son he used to walk with me. And we will meet in different islands. And when he wouldn't even pay his son a visit, he would pay me a visit. That's only how close I tell her how we were. He never passed me anywhere in the street. He's a very good man. He was a fun man. Jovial man. Sometimes, yes. He get angry, yes. But it's in all of us. It's a bino. Today, we... We come to pay our last respect to you, in spite of that I nearly missed it, because I never knew Mr. Biden dead until about Wednesday or Tuesday like that. When I say that to many people, they say, well, look, look you ain't living in St. Vincent. But this thing happens sometimes. Mr. Bino is a family man. 
and he works hard. Before I get close to him, I used to hear about him. Because I am from Hamilton, he is from Paddy Farm. And I know he's, he works very hard for his family. Very, very hard. He was a hard working man. And he was also an ambitious man as well. But today, I am proud to be here standing, which I, I, this is something I don't normally do. Right? But because of my closeness with Mr. Bino, I could not sit in my seat without coming up here and say something. The family knows me well, and they know how close me and their, their father was. Well, Mr. D, I give my condolences to the family. I hope you all will um, understand that we only come here for a short time, and Papa will have to go when the Lord call him home. And today, as we gather here, to give a pay our last respect, as I mentioned before, may he rest in peace.
special thanks to my niece. She came up and she played a pivotal role in taking care of him, Patrice. Many times he got frustrated with her and the kids, but she never gave up. She stuck with him to the end. Thank you very much, Patrice. When I heard his call, I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day. To laugh, to love, to walk our play. Tasks left undone must stay that way. I found the peace at the close of the day. If my parting has left a void, then fill it with, with remembered joys. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. Yeah, these things I too will miss. Be not born with times of sorrow. I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full, I savored much. Good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Don't let it now with Andrew grief. Lift up your hearts and peace to thee. God wanted me now, he set me free. Jesus, you keep my heart. 
Give him the last tribute. with the feather in his cap and you know his mannerism we just laugh every time he came to the office it would be a happy time he would bring his guitar and he would play there was one time he left his guitar for weeks and then i would take it up and we would play and he would have a good time in the office you know and he was always a joyful person and giving jokes and stuff like that and he was a family man. He did his part. And his time has come. It's a road that we all have to walk. But we could never get accustomed to death. But he has gone into a better place. He's at rest. And let us be cheerful. You know, he lived a full life. You know? So to everyone, especially the family. Again, I say heartfelt condolences and be strong. Yeah. Congregation, could you please stand? I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we shall carry nothing out. The Lord give, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. To this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be both Lord of the dead 
unbelieving. Our Savior Jesus Christ abolished death and brought life and immortality to the light of the gospel. I am the first and the lost. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and of hell. Because he lived, we will live also. And that shall be no more. Neither there shall be any mourning nor crying. For the former things are past all. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, friends, we gather here today to celebrate the life of our dear friend, a father, a grandfather, a brother, a co-worker, Leonard Bino. Your presence here today of indicate that somewhere he has touched your life that you can make your presence heard. We thank you for coming. I like to welcome my associate ministers, Pastor Bino, his brother, our minister Fitzwilson, and other ministers who are here of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'd like to welcome you. Before I take my seat, I'd like to convey my deepest condolences to the family of the bereaved. Bear with me for just a few seconds. Since they came to reside at Camden Park, we have developed a great friendship his wife and my wife were very close, and many of his daughters or children can attest to the fact. And so we as a family, we were very close. I recall the times when he will sit outside of the church waiting for me when he have a problem to discuss. Conversation never end. Because there's always a time to continue. He was such a joyful person. A person who can make you happy. And every time he, he will attend this gathering, he will sit in the back, well attired, and he will greet me. No other name but Uncle Arman. That was the name he called me all since he came around, Uncle Arman. On behalf of the church family and my family, Alexander's family, I'd like to convey our deepest condolences to the Bino family and all the family, those are near and extended ones. We pray in the time of your bereavement, you will find peace and solace through the word of the Lord. May God richly bless you as we continue in this proceeding. Sister Samantha Wiley is going to take you through the service. God bless her as she comes. Praise God. Good afternoon to everyone. Good morning, sorry. <laughs> On our program, we're going to sing our first hymn, It Is Well, with my soul remain standing.
we bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for life. Thank you for joining Mercy. Thank you for all that he has done for us today. So Lord, we can celebrate life. We thank you for the family and friends who have came from far and near. Even in the time of their bereavement, oh Lord God, I pray you give them a song of peace so they can rejoice in the time of their crisis. You promised to give us consolation so we can in likewise console those who are in similar trouble. So today, Father, in the name of Jesus, Meet the Bino's family that is grieving at this moment. We pray, Father, for a timely word. Oh, Lord God, as we will go through this service, your blessing will be upon us. We hereby commit this service into your care. We pray your Holy Spirit will be the administrator who will lead this service to the honor and glory of your great name. Let nothing of ourselves be seen but let you, O oh God, be seen in this service. At the conclusion of this service, Lord, we want you to have the glory. We want you to have the praise. And Lord, we, your children, will move from this setting with your blessing. So, Lord God, don't allow us to go to our home without that peace in our hearts. Speak to some person today. They will give their life to you and surrender everything on your altar. So, Lord, bless us as we go through this service. This is my prayer to Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Praise God. Bless the Lord. So, at this time, we're going to have our first scripture reading, which will be read by Kasson Gordon. Morning, church. First scripture reading. Read it from First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 to 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither do it corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor not in vain in the Lord. Here in the reading. Praise God. Our second hymn, Ocean Rise.
right back into our, on our program sheet. So at this time, we are going to welcome Abanella Pearson with our second scripture reading. Please stand for the scripture reading. to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stone and a time to gather stone together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to run and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. This is the second scripture reading. Praise God. Please remain standing for the third scripture reading. This will be read by Ophelia Mitchell. St. John chapter 14, 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And where I go, and where I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That's where I am, there may he be also. And whether I go, he, go, he know. And the way he know, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how come we know the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This is the third chapter reading. Praise Daddy, God. Daddy, I will miss you very much. What can I express? Bless the Lord. Praise God. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Praise God.
this protocol has been established and first I want to give honor to the pastor of this house, wonderful man of God, Pastor Alexander. I count it a privilege and a great honor. As the lost child of my mother, to give the eulogy in this funeral of my fifth brother, Leonard Leighton Bino, better known as Uncle Bunje, and some people call him Jerry was born on the 6th of November, 1938, to Lynn Bino and Eugene Ford. He took sick and became very ill. Finally, he succumbed, capitulated to this inevitable monster of death on the 19th of October, 20. 21. Just missing his 83rd birthday by a few weeks. He was the fifth child of Lynn Bino of 14 children. He attended the Patrick Farm Government School. After finishing his primary education, he went to sea at a very tender and early age and start working to help out his parents with the other siblings. He sailed on some small schooners, Rosaline and Adonis, and others, from St. Vincent to Barbados to Trinidad to Guyana. By this time, Uncle Bonja met with the lover of his life, a very young, winsome, attractive, and nifty, delectable lady by the name of Nomi, better known as Tante Brownie. In this wonderful relationship, they were joined together in holy wedlock on the 28th of October, 1970. In this relationship and union, they produce 13 children. Four is now deceased, and nine is still alive, namely Arden, Sheridan, Ophelia, Sylvia, Alban, Anna, Avenello, and Shanika. He was small in stature, but Uncle Bunja was not only Batting, he was scoring heavily. He left nine children, 25 grandchildren, and 13 great grand. He was employed with National Ball Carrier for many years and touched every single continent on the planet. Name them. Europe, Asia, Africa, North America, South America, touch every Caribbean island. I can tell you from knowledge, my brother was a true and dedicated, assiduous family man. When others had to go at the shop to buy, buy the pongs and onces, my brother house had it by the case, the sacks, and the five pongs when you had to go and buy by the ounces. Everywhere you turn in his home, you could have get something, put your hands on something to eat. That's how committed that Uncle Bunja was. And this is irrefutable. And undeniable. That's true. I am saying this with passion. He was able to achieve 
some things in life for his family that many fathers, including me, were unable to achieve and many others will never be able to achieve. He and his own went to Barbados and his own went to Barbados at the U.S. Embassy and get visas for his children, all those who are in the United States of America, who are in the United States, not only that he went and gotten their visa, but he paid the passage to the United States. Come on, this need to be applauded. It need to be applauded. Put your hands together. He was also implied with the geese lined for several years, traveling to the United Kingdom. He was a busy man, very small, diminutive in stature, but he had a big, big, colossal heart. A man never wanted, he never wanted to sit down doing nothing. That's how much he loved and dedicated his life to his family. After he retired from the geese line, still he wanted to be occupied, to keep himself busy. After spending a few years home, he decided, this is not the place I want to be. So he took his journey to Canada and worked for five years in Canada in his old age, you know. Shall I reiterate that point again? In his old age and returned back home to St. Vincent. That's how much Uncle Bunji, my brother, was dedicated. You can see what you want. You can, you can put him and score him in, from 10 points. And I'm telling you, it was very good. You can always throw away the two other points, but eight points in his life was excellent. Let me tell you a little story about my brother, Uncle Bunja. He went to New York some years ago. So he went to get a checkup at King's County Hospital. So it was very hard for him to get attendance too for the amount of people that were there. So Uncle Bunji decided to put on a display that was so incredible to get attention. And what he did, I mean it's something, I am telling you, I don't know, he bound with some gift. And the things that he was able to do, you just can, could not do this very same thing, otherwise you would have been in prison. He was able to do it and get off. And I said one time to him, well, you really born with a special gift, you know. Because he was able to do certain things that you and I will never be able to do. So what he did, he can't get no attendance, no attention. He threw himself down on the floor, start howling, crying, shouting, and rolling. I'm talking about vociferous howling. All through Kings County, you can hear my brother crying, howling out loud. Stentorian song. So they had no other choice. They had to run to his attention and took him to the emergency room. He need to be applauded for that. You know that would have cost him 40,000 US dollars. And he had, he was given attendance absolutely free. Oh, Uncle Bunge. What a human being you were. In another instance, he went to Barbados at the embassy for a visit for one of his grandchildren. And you know that no, the policy of the embassy that grandparents cannot apply for grandchildren. So the counselor told him he cannot get the visit. Uncle Bond just started in the embassy. 
even the security and them had to move in. You know. Tight security guard in the embassy. U.S. Embassy I'm talking about him. You know. And he starts to listen to me. When you pay for your goods, you must get your goods. And if you don't get your goods, then you have to give back the money that you paid for the goods. And he keep on, and I tell you, he light up the entire embassy. And the counselor had no other choice than to say, Mister, come, come. I will give you the visa for your grandchild. Come on, that needs to be applauded. I can go on and on. He made several trips to the United States of America to visit his children who were unable to come back to St. Vincent. He went there several times. He was a true, a serious family man. Let's show you much, how much he loved his family. He is gone, but his legacy will continue. Yes, the Bino's family have lost a popular figure popular figure. I'm telling you, a true family member, his children have lost a true dedicated father. His grandchildren have lost a mentor and a loving grandfather. We have lost a good brother. He had a unique personality. Even though if he don't know you, my love, my love, and hugging you up. He had an excellent, unique personality. He was compassionate, kind, gregarious, benignant, and formed, fee, balance. What a wonderful person he was. He is now gone, but he has left indelible marks upon the lives of many people here. You have left indelible marks upon his family, upon my personal life. He has gone, but he will never be forgotten for weeks and months and even years to come. He'll be talked about. I am obliged. God bless you in the name of Jesus. And that was the life of Mr. Bino. We all can testify of that. He was a unique person. He was a unique character. Bless the Lord. Praise God. So we're making way for the homily. But before we do, we have that. We are going to sing further along. Our fourth hymn, Father
Hallelujah. Let the enemy be scattered. Praise God. Let them that hate thee flee. Let them melt as wax before the sun. Praise God. Shoot out your arrow and scatter them. Send forth your mighty angel, discomfort them. Let your word go forward with power or with authority. Let it go forth as a sharp twin sword, piercing the joints and marrow, and dissolving thoughts and intent for your honor and for your glory. Somebody give God praise. Praise the Lord. Somebody give the Lord praise. Somebody give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I greet everyone this morning in the blessed name of Jesus. All the pastors and ministers. All the families, the Bino families. I convey my condolence to you. And pray that God will strengthen you and comfort you. In this time of bereavement. This morning I want to speak to us. From the book of Job. Job the 14th chapter. Verse 14. It says. If a man die. Shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Thou shalt call and I will answer thee. Thou will have a desire to the work of thy hand. Somebody give God praise for his word today. This morning I want to speak to us about the afterlife. Just as life before death is real. Life after death is also real. The book of Job is known as the oldest book in history. The Bible tells us that Job was a perfect and upright man, one who feared God and shunned evil. The Bible says that Job had seven sons three daughters he had a great livestock he was the greatest man in the east the bible shows us that the book of job shows the suffering in israel and many questions are asked. Why do we suffer? But while the Bible did not give us a clear answer. Of why there is suffering. It shows us that God is sovereign. And that God is in control. It shows us. That there is a continuous war. That there is a devil. There is an adversary. Who hates humanity. Or will do anything lies in its power. To bring suffering. Upon God's creation. The Bible shows us. That Job was perfect and upright. And this irritates Satan. Because Satan thought that Job is only serving God.
thought God bless him. So because this irritates Satan, Satan went to God and told God that Job is only serving you for naught. But if you touch him, he will cause you to his face. The conversation went on with the devil and God. And God gave Satan permission to touch God. God told him to touch all that he has, but don't touch his body. So the Bible shows us that Satan went forth And shovel job substance. The Bible shows us in one day Job lose his seven thousand sheep and his servants, his three thousand camel and his servants, his five hundred she asses and his servant, and his seven sons. And three daughters in one day. Job experience more trouble in one day that some people have experienced in their lifetime. And some people will never experience such chaos, tragedy in their lifetime. The Bible shows us. The devil was not satisfied. He said to God, skin for skin. All that a man will give. But if you touch his body, he will cause you to his face. The devil went forth and touched Job's body. Job's body became filled with sores. Job rent his garment. And sat down in sackcloth and ashes. He was unrecognizable to this, even his very friends. Job made some statements. He even caused the day that he was born. He said that man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Then he came to the point where he says, If a man die, shall he live again? This is an old age question that many have struggled with. A question that have plagued scientists. A question that confused the philosophers. And still today, it is confusing many. If a man die, shall he live again? As I said the last time I was here, that death is mandatory. We have no choice. Because death is not something we can pick and choose. Thus we came. And thus we shall return. That is something that we cannot avoid. But we are subject unto death. Death has no friend. Death is a cruel, heartless, and merciless enemy. Death does not choose when to attack. He comes uninvited. He comes unnoticed. He comes and leave people disappointed. He leave people mourning. He leave people grieved. He leave us bring a separation between family. He brings deep sorrows and pain. Death is cruel. So Job realized that man is subject to death. 
And he asks, if a man die, shall he live again? Or should the Bible we notice, especially in the book of Genesis, the book of the beginning, it tells us, and all the days of Adam live were 930 years, and he died. All the days of Methuselah, the oldest man, were 969 years, and he died. All the days of Noah was 950 years, and he died. Abraham, the fathers of faith, the Bible says, then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in his good old age. An old man full of years and was gathered unto his people. My friends, death still, Roman, death still, steal people, death still capture, even the saved and the unsaved, the lone and the unknown. The rich and the poor, the black and the white, the vaccinated and unvaccinated. That is no respect of persons. That does not wait until you finish college. That does not wait until you tie the knot. That does not wait until your children pass the wars. That comes. But if a man die, Shall he live again? The Muslim think that we have a soul and that, so, that survive outside of the body after death. And the idea that there will be a day where God will judge humanity is one of the six core beliefs in Islam. The Buddhists they believe after death, you don't go somewhere on the wall. But stay in this one. When your body dies, you are reborn in a different one. The Buddha says, there is no self or soul. There is no you. According to the Buddhist, you sense that you are the same person throughout your life is an illusion. For the Buddhist, Everything always changing. Nothing is permanent. So when you die, not you, but the energy that shapes you into somebody else. That's what the Buddhists believe. But the Bible tells us that there is life after death. There is life. The Bible shows us Jose, one of the old prophets, he said, I will ransom them from the grave, from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. Oh, death, I will be your play. Oh, grave, I will be your destruction. That was in the Old Testament. Daniel says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Jesus came and he re echo what Daniel says. He said, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto like the to the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. There is life after death. Not as one called Sonia once put it, that when I done, I done. No, nothing goes so. Man will live somewhere after death. Death is not a destiny. Death is a transition from life to life. It is a transitional point. I remember one time I was coming home from the islands when I reached to Barbados. 
I told the immigration officer, all I have to do is give the airline a code and then I will get my ticket. He said, no, he took my passport. I said, I am not staying here. I am in transit. He still proceed. Only a couple minutes later, he have to bring back my passport because that was not my destiny. I was transit to St. Vincent. My friends, loved ones, death is not our destiny. Death is a transition from time into eternity. Jesus Christ brought life and immortality to life. When Adam and Eve sin, God says, thus, thus you came, and thus you shall return. But Jesus Christ came. Um, the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though you are dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Jesus answered your question that man will live on after death. My friends, I could tell you if there was not a life after death, then Jesus was when he came and paid a ransom price to purchase our salvation to reconcile us back to God. But he came. Because death does not end at all. Man is going to live somewhere in eternity. But where? Where would you spend your time after death? As I said, death is mandatory. But your eternal destiny is voluntary. You have the power to choose where you want to spend your eternal destiny. You have that power. You can't choose if you're going to die. But you have the power to choose where you want to spend your eternal destiny. This is a choice that every one of us need to make in this life. Because the Bible tells us it is appointed unto man once to die, but after death comes the judgment. If you had one chance, if you had one chance in life to do something that you love best, you will put in the greatest effort. If you got one chance to go to the United States that you dream of, you will do whatever lies within your power because it's only one chance. So the Bible says, it is appointed unto man once to die. One chance. One chance. My friend, if you have one chance to die, then it behooves you and I to make the best of it. To make the necessary preparation that will make the right choice. To go to the best place in our de eternal destiny. One chance. And many people say the uncle, the auntie, the grandma came back and tell us such and such. Nothing goes so. Something my auntie tell me go baptize, go mourn. Nothing goes so. 
The Bible says when a person dies, their thoughts perish. They are not conscious of what taking place here or not. The body lose that consciousness. And there's no communication from time to eternal to, to from time into eternity. There is no communication. Man is gonna go one or two places after death. The Bible tells us that Jesus spake and he said, the certain rich man who clothed sumptuously every day. And there was a beggar who sat at this gate, desiring the scrums that fell from his table. He was full of souls. But there came a time when the rich man died and was buried. No doubt he had a stage soon all. Flood, flying half mass. Radio station become religious. But the Bible says, Lazarus also died or was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. Different destination. The Bible says in hell, he lifted up his eyes being in torment. Sin, Lazarus of Father, in Abraham's bosom, and beg Abraham, send Lazarus to dip his tip of his finger because he's tormented in this flame. Lazarus, Abraham said, Friend, remember in your lifetime you had good things, Abraham bad things, but now there is a gold fix. There is a gold fix. My friend, when there was a gulf, when the sin bring a gap between man and God, Jesus Christ bridged the gap. But now after death, there is a gold fix that cannot be bridged. Not even a Chinese can bridge that gap. This is fix. One is comforted. The other is so mental, the table torn. I'm not saying that if you're rich, you're going to hell. I'm not saying if you're poor, you're going in Abraham's bosom. That does not guarantee you. It's only Jesus Christ alone makes the difference. So there is a, a difference between destiny. When you die, life or not, my friends, is filled with sorrows and pain and heartache, disappointments, filled with debts and mortgage and bills and brokenness. This is what this life gives. Every day we wake up as some bad news. Something that trouble our heart. We love life. People will do anything to survive because life is gone. But yet, there is brokenness. We have the COVID to deal with. We have social distancing to deal with. And all these things in this life, we have to deal with. But brother, sister, friends, loved ones, life after death can either be better or better. It could either be better than this life or worse than this life. All depends on where we choose to spend our destiny. 
a hard Caesar said when John was on the Isle of Patmos, banished for the word of God and for the testimony of the Lord Jesus. He said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven was passed away and there was no more sea. And I John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. Prepare as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I will give to him that is thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He says, But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the homongers, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all that rise shall have the part in the lake of which boiled forever and ever. This is the second death. My friends, I said, life could be better than this. Where there is no more sorrow, no more death, no more where we need ever ready or meals, no more where we need a funeral service, no more where we come to a school where there is a funeral, no more. No more sickness and disease to deal with. No more bills to pay. No more sorrow, no more pain. Because the former things are passed away. God himself shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. Some of us right now have some pain that nobody else knows but the heart. Some of us have some pain, some brokenness between us that nobody knows but God. But the time will come. If you trust God as your Savior and Lord, you say, Behold, I make all things new. Life can be better after death. But it could be better. Because the word John says also, And I saw a great white throne. On him that sat upon it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found a place of them. From nothing the earth and the heaven came from, and nothing they returned. Because when God created the heaven and the earth, he speak and things that were not came into being. Now they disappear back to where they came from. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. The books were open, and another book, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. The sea gave up the dead. Death and hell gave up the dead. And they were all judged, everyone, according to their works. So if you die at sea, don't think you lost. If you go missing at sea, and the coast guard can't find you. On that day, the sea will give you up. If you cremated, the ash will want to come together to stand before God. If you go to hell, hell 
will only keep you for a time. But on that day, death and hell will release you. Because hell is not the final destination. The Bible says, and death and hell will cast into the lake of fire, which born it forever and ever, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life will cast into the lake of fire. My friends, loved one, there is life after death. There is life after death. It will either be better than this life or better. It can either be with God or separated from God. It can either be living in peace and joy and happiness forever and ever or living in torment forever and ever. Life is real. Death is real. Life after death is also real. Hear me today. All who are wise in heart and understand it. Choose today where you want to spend your eternity. Because death will not tell you when it's coming. It won't send you a WhatsApp message. You want to see it on eyewitness news. You want to hear it on NBC or one of those FM stations. It will come unannounced. Where do you plan to spend your eternity? Life could either be better or it could be bitter. It's all up to you today to choose your eternal destiny. One of peace and joy with God will be your God. Or where you will be tormented forever and ever. Choose wisely. Choose your eternal destiny to be with God. That when all this life of pain and suffering and death is over, you can be with God. Where there will be no more death, no more sorrow, no more pain. No more heartaches, no more tears, because God made all things new. In poetry today, that death is real, that's why we are here today. But life after death is also real. Choose to be with God. Jesus Christ came to give us hope. Don't reject this and find yourself in a lost eternity because you will have to bypass the blood of Jesus you will have to foresee the great salvation of God to find yourself in a lost eternity when it will be much easier for you to accept him as savior and Lord and receive life everlasting with God death is real life after death is also real. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We invite the family to stand for a special prayer wherever you are. This family member, would you just stand? All family members, could you just please stand? You know, we have a long distance from here to which we normally run our. So we are going to pray for you. Could you bear ahead with me? We have for you all as a family. Father, we thank you for this message today. 
We thank you for the minister that you have used to show us to decide our destiny. We pray for family members today who are not saved, that Lord, you will speak to their hearts and they will make the decision to follow you as Savior, Lord. Remember those who are broken in heart, those who are going through the pain of grief. I'm asking you, Father, in Jesus' name, to comfort them. Lord, help them to find solace in your word. And as they go through this season, I pray that you assure them you will be with them. I'm asking you, Father, in Jesus' name now, to intercept every plan of the enemy. Keep this family in unity. We know, Lord God, many times when death comes in our family, it brings pain, it's separation, disunity. But I pray against the spirit of disunity and everything that will come, Lord, to separate this family, I pray in the name of Jesus. I dismantle every plan of the enemy in the atmosphere. I denounce every plan. I cancel them, call them null and void. And I pray, oh God, your will will be done now. Take full control of this service. Take full control of the lives of your people. And help them to know that you're always there. And you promise to be with us always. So take full control. We're about to go to the cemetery to do the internment, Lord. We pray for protection on the street as we walk and travel. For those who be driving in the automobile, sit in the driver in the driver's seat. For those who be walking, walk with them. And we pray, God, let everything be done in unity and decency. And at the end, Lord, you have the glory. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to make announcement. We are about to go to the cemetery to do the internment. I'd like to do allow the minister to go in front of the casket. The family will follow and then the congregation will proceed after the family. When you get to the cemetery, I'm asking you please let us maintain social distancing at the cemetery. Please, please, please. Thank you.